it's live. So I start speaking. Connecting comments will begin to okay. Good morning. Uh, how are you? This is the first time we are holding this uh, uh, Facebook chat, live chat on Sunday morning. This is the second chat, but on Sunday morning, yeah. this is the first chat. So I hope uh, this time is suitable for all my friends to come in and uh, converse with me. So shoot your questions. So why don't you speak on Talib Kishwami? Ah, uh, Mr. Hilaskar is saying good morning, sir. Uh, Suraj Prakash is also saying good morning. I'm good. Sundara Gadhav has joined. Uh, uh, please ask your questions. I'm looking forward to questions from you. Swapnil Ingre uh, is there. Uh, good morning, Swapnil. Good morning, uh, Sandeep uh, Irkane. Rajendra Randhir, good morning. Please ask questions. I'm here to answer your questions. Okay, finally there is a question uh, from Rajendra Randhir. Being the member of parliament and as an economist, how do you see the recent changes in calculation of inflation and GDP growth rate? Uh, as far as the inflation is concerned, let me talk about this. As far as the inflation is concerned, there are two ways of measuring inflation. One is uh, WPI, that is the Wholesale Price Index, and other one is uh, CPI, that is Consumer Price Index. We have increasingly been moving towards CPI, the Consumer Price Index, because that is connected with the basket of uh, commodities which are consumed by people at large. Um, and CPI inflation is uh, at um, its uh, uh, highest level in the last 22 months. It is at 5.77% and that is a cause for concern. The cause for concern here really is that not only the inflation rate is rising uh, after declining for two years, that it is rising now, but what is most important is that the food prices have been shooting very high particularly the prices of dal and um, other pulses, they are uh, historically very high and commodities of common consumption, potatoes, uh, uh, other vegetables and pulses, particularly dal, they are very high and that is a prime uh, area of concern. Uh, as far as GDP growth is concerned, you know, uh, we are doing well as far as our overall GDP is concerned. India is now one of the fastest growing country in the world, but there is no, no uh, room for complacency. We have several problems that we have. In agriculture, the growth rate is stuck up because of the successively two years of drought. And that what has happened is that in many parts, including my own state, Maharashtra, farmers have been committing suicide. Fortunately, there is a good rainfall or prospects of good rainfall, so agriculture is expected to improve. Same thing about industry. Industry has been stagnating. The manufacturing growth has not been impressive at all. It is services sector which is doing well. Our, while our overall growth rate is very impressive, uh, there are very serious problems and major challenges that we have to face. Uh, what will be the good books on Ambedkar? Suraj Prakash Singh has asked this very good question. What will be good books about Dr. Ambedkar? Well, friends, uh, I, uh, I have written extensively on Dr. Ambedkar. In fact, I have written 21 books on Dr. Ambedkar now, uh, eight in Marathi, uh, eight in English, nine, uh, nine in Marathi, eight in English, and five in Hindi. Uh, of these books, uh, what is most important is that there is an intellectual biography of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. And uh, there are three volumes of Dr. Ambedkar's speeches then there are two volumes of Dr. Ambedkar's work, uh, writings, and then there is one intellectual biography. 
you should take a look at all this and they are available in English in Marathi and in Hindi so these are I believe that in fact the book that I have written uh, an intellectual biography of Dr. Ambedkar uh, is the most comprehensive book which which gives traces the evolution of Dr. Ambedkar's thinking over a period of time and the various policy stance or stances that he took at various points of time uh, it uh, gives the uh, the logic and reasoning behind that so it is the first ever intellectual biography of Dr. Ambedkar please do take a look at it and that has been uh, uh, lauded, applauded uh, very much uh, Sopnil is saying uh, Sopnil Ingle is saying sir, hello sir please can you suggest me any book I missed that question uh, uh, so Omkar is saying uh, that uh, uh, I asked you to come to NIBM and uh, have done some procedure. Okay, when when I get the formal invitation, I will certainly consider coming to NIBM. Uh, Trushali Ghate is saying, uh, how far has reservation helped us? And how long do you think there is a need to continue with the policy of reservation? Very good question, Trushali. Uh, reservations have been helpful, but not to the extent that they were supposed to be. Um, and how long they should continue? They should continue as long as why are reservations needed i believe that reservations are needed basic basically because of the inability of the indian social system to be just and fair to the vulnerable strata of society so as long as the system is unjust and unfair to uh, scheduled caste and scheduled tribe the reservations would have to continue that is uh, something that i believe and that is what i have been emphasizing uh, Rajendra Dhanbhir has been asking, with the monetary and credit policy prerogatives available to RBI, how effective it is uh, on the curbing of total inflation. Um, inflation, uh, RBI is quite effective curbing inflation, but there are two sides to that. RBI basically does the uh, demand management, but you know the prices are decided by interaction of demand and supply. So RBI, what RBI does is to manage the demand but it's the supply side which is supposed to be handled by the government of India and that is where sometimes problem come. So many times fiscal policy becomes so dominating that monetary policy becomes subservient. There have been instances of that happening in the past um, but the, the right mix of monetary and supportive fiscal policy is required if we want to effectively contain inflation. Now take the case of the recent inflation, the spurt in the pulses, prices of pulses, dal, etc. All these uh, uh, can be controlled only by supply side measures, not by demand side measures. So that to that extent, RBI has a limited ability to finally control the inflation. Uh, there is also question about uh, uh, Rajendra Randhir is saying that uh, I have read you, your Ambedkar speaks. It is intellectually very appealing. Congratulations. Thank you, Rajendra. Thank you. I wish everybody reads my 21 books on Dr. Ambedkar because a complete life of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, his thoughts, um, they are all captured there and that should become a compulsory reading for anybody who is interested in the broad social issues. I, what I want to see emphasize here that it is wrong to see Dr. Ambedkar only as a Dalit leader. Dr. Ambedkar was truly a national leader par excellence and that is something that uh, we need to understand. Uh, friends, I welcome the, 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 the new entrants uh, in this chat and uh, friends, please uh, do join, uh, please do follow me on Twitter and I will keep answering your questions. Uh, Gandhar Bhandari is saying, uh, what do you think about Zavadekar G's new portfolio? I think it is a very welcome development. Um, I cannot say that I was too excited or happy about uh, the government's choice of uh, earlier uh, human resource development minister. Um, so this change is a very welcome change and I'm very happy about it. Uh, Prakash Javadekar ji will do a very good job. In any case, he, he will be able to do certainly much better job than his uh, not so distinguished predecessor. Uh, Suraj Prakash Singh. Will GST help small businesses? Yes, GST will certainly help small businesses. What has happened is that, you know, uh, they, two things will happen because of GST. One is that uh, uh, the, the Indian market 
India, India is one country, but it's not one economic market in the economic sense. So it will become one market and the cascading effects of taxes. There are taxes and on taxes, there are further taxes and there are there's a lot of cascading effects which impede the economic growth. So I believe that GST would be the most important uh, reform in the Indian economic system uh, after the 1991 reforms which were um, uh, initiated by uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh as the finance minister. As the finance minister. Uh, so it will help everybody. It can promote the GDP from one to one and a half percentage points. It can add that. So today we are at seven and a half percent. If GST is approved, and I certainly hope and pray that it will be, uh, it will take the GDP growth on a much higher uh, trajectory of higher economic growth. Uh, Bhanu Prasad ji is asking why I, I am do not follow GOI norms in faculty positions, especially in I am in Calcutta. Uh, uh, I, 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 yeah, they should follow the government of India norms, but they are autonomous. So there is a conflict. Uh, uh, there, uh, but uh, uh, government of India norms should be followed by all uh, India institutions, um, uh, like IIMs. Uh, but that's my position. Uh, Onkar Sanjay Hilaskar is asking, what should be the proper solution to, for inflation right now? Uh, first of all, the solution really lies in uh, in in, in um, uh, coming very strongly against all the holders. Uh, that is happening. There are all kinds of supply management uh, bottlenecks which need to be improved. That is something that we must do immediately. As far as Dal is concerned, you'll be surprised that the government has enough stocks and they are willing to give it to states. But many states, including our own state Maharashtra, has not been lifting the Dal which is offered by the central government at the rate of between 74 to 82 rupees. This is really very, very sad. This is part of our inefficiency of several state governments, including Maharashtra government. Uh, pra Prasad Gade is saying, uh, please tell us about economic aspects of uh, merging railway uh, and union budget. Uh, no big issue. Uh, you know, there is constantly talk about merging uh, these two deficit, uh, two uh, budgets, uh, but that will not be accomplishing. That will not accomplish anything, in my opinion. The separation is fine. In fact, now there is a growing demand that there should be a separate budget for agriculture, uh, just like there is a separate budget for railway. Now, these discussions are on. Let us see how things unfold. Uh, Bhushan Shendi is saying, when atrocities on Dalit will stop, in, it is increasing every year. Bhushan, this is a very important question. This is a question which is very close to my heart. Uh, I welcome the newcomers to this uh, uh, this chat and I certainly uh, wish to continue talking to all of you. Please do follow up, follow me up uh, on, um, on, 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 on the Twitter and uh, Bhushan coming to your question. Uh, Dalit atrocities have been going on for long and uh, and the, what has happened in Una and Gujarat is most despicable and dastardly act and uh, we have to condemn it, condemn it with everything that we have. When will the Dalit, uh, uh, when, when will the atrocity stop? There are four things that are required, in my opinion, four things are required uh, to contain uh, the uh, uh, Dalit atrocities committed on Dalits. First of all, this Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribe uh, Prevention of Atrocities Act must be very effectively implemented. Today, you will be shocked to see that in many states, uh, the conviction rate of cases registered against perpetrators of uh, uh, crimes on uh, uh, against uh, Dalits, their conviction rate is only 3%. Our national average is 22%. Whereas, under IP, uh, uh, under the uh, uh, Indian Penal Code, our conviction rate is as high as 45%. So clearly, we need to effectively implement the laws which are already in existence. One. Second thing that we, we, we have to do is to implement the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe sub plan. Scheduled caste sub plan has to be implemented very effectively. And the difference between the economic indicators. If you see the economic indicators on, of scheduled caste on one hand and all others on the other, uh, the gap has been narrowing but at a very slow pace. So we need to effectively implement the scheduled caste sub plan uh, faithfully in letter and in spirit. Third thing that we need to do, I believe, is that we have to give serious consideration 
to giving up our last name, our family names, identify ourselves. And therefore, I think we need to debate on this issue. Everybody from the death certificate on the birth certificate and the school leaving certificate, the family names, we should think about quitting the family names and everybody should have only the first name and the father's name. I think that will be a major, uh, major move in that direction and I'm seriously contemplating bringing uh, a, a, a private member's bill in the Rajya Sabha in the near future to this effect. Fourth thing that we must do, a government must do, is to encourage uh, very strongly the intercaste marriages. So there are lots of things that need to be done, but most importantly, effective implementation of the acts which are already available uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, prevention of atrocities against scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. Those must be done immediately, and to begin with. The action, as far as the Gujarat Una incident is concerned, the stringest possible action must be done, taken on a fast track. And that should be made a case, an example to demonstrate what would be the implications of anybody perpetrating atrocities on Dalits and other people. Chetan Savre, again, welcome to our new entrance here. Chetan Savre has, has asked, uh, you are, he says that you are an inspiration to all of us. You should form a political party so that we can have an educated and most reliable person. Uh, I understand, Chetan, I understand your feelings and I have received messages to this effect from a lot of young friends. Um, I see the spirit in which you are saying, but I'm afraid I do not want to start any political party, nor do I want to join any political party. What I want to do is to remain in Rajya Sabha and use that without joining any political party. I want to concentrate on the economic and social issues and cultural issues. And I can engage with the government to solve those problems. That will not happen if I join any particular political party. And we have uh, many factions. We have 56 factions of Republican Party. I do not certainly want to create one more faction because everybody cannot do politics. Politics go, has gone into every field, but people like me should rise above that and focus on economic and social issues and remaining within the government framework, try to bring about the change which is desirable for Dalits and for other people. That is my strategy, and so far the strategy is working very well. Uh, I again welcome many more friends who are coming online. Jamshed uh, uh, Bhagwagar says that why don't we pass a bill uh, of nobody can contest an election if he is, I'm sorry, what will be the end? I, I missed that question. Uh, Mihir Asha Kisan Bhuir is saying that, sir, with UP election on face, uh, uh, the question is cut there. Uh, UP elections are there, but I'm uh, of uh, Rajendra Randhir is asking, uh, Rajendra Randhir is asking, uh, uh, of the total SCST welfare budget allotted to a minimal portion is actually utilized. Why is political will lacking in this concern? Again, Rajendra, very, very good question. What has happened is that all governments, may it be Congress government, may it be BJP government, all governments have not implemented the scheduled caste subplan policies effectively. In fact, you know, according to the guidelines which were issued by Planning Commission, all ministries of the central government were supposed to give 16.8% of their earmark, 16.8% of their funds for the welfare of the scheduled caste and corresponding for scheduled tribe. That has almost never happened. In 2009, when I joined the Planning Commission as a member, uh, among other things, I was in charge of scheduled caste plan as well, and um, I I pointed out to the Prime Honourable the then uh, Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh that you know we cannot go on taking credit for a scheme which has not been implemented for last 40 years. This scheme has not been implemented. Either we should implement it effectively or close it down. You cannot take credit for something that you are not using. And he agreed with that. He appointed a committee under my chairmanship. That committee was instrumental in raising the level. And, but still, from a level of 5 to 6% instead of 16.8, uh, it went up to 9.5% and that is where it is today. It is still, while it is a major improvement over the past, uh, it is still far away from 16.8% and we need very effective implementation. Friends, let me tell you this. 
it's very important to note that the new government has not taken any position on the scheduled caste plan. And with the planning coming to an end, with the planning commission being replaced by Niti Ayo, we do not know what would be the future of scheduled caste plan. This is one very important issue that I'm going to raise in the parliament and um, uh, bring out a debate on that and some concrete decision I would be expecting in the near future. Uh, Welcome to newer people. Please uh, do join me on, uh, on, on Twitter, friends. Uh, uh, Bhushan Shinde has said that um, at Ahmednagar, our Ambedkarite politicians have been stopped from uh, meeting the victim's family. Uh, uh, this is the decision of the government, and they thought that it was uh, important to stop them uh, so that the law and order situation doesn't deteriorate further. Uh, there were tensions, and that's why government of the day has taken that action. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Suraj Prakash Singh is saying what major changes in our education system are required today. Uh, this will require a longish answer, but I will give you a short answer. Uh, our education system needs a complete overhaul. And, um, you know, when I was a member planning commission in charge of education, there were many important things were introduced. But the most important one was RUSA, uh, the Rashtriya Uchchatar Shiksha Abhiyan. I fought with all my colleagues to introduce that, and that is being implemented now, not as effectively as it should be, but a very large amount of money would be received by the uh, state universities. What is happening about the state universities, 91% of our students go to state universities, um, and, but they are the ones which have perpetual uh, paucity of funding. Uh, the state governments don't help them because they say that we don't have money. Central government doesn't give them because they think that the state government will uh, give them money. So we have this RUSA, Rashtriya Uchchatar Shiksha Abhiyan, under which very large amount of money is going to go to the state universities. State universities happen to be the mainstay of Indian education system and focusing on them is the order of the day. Uh, there are many other problems but that we'll talk as we go along. Abhijit English says he is very happy to see, uh, see me alive, uh, see me live. Um, Abhijit, thank you very much. Um, I'm also very happy that uh, uh, you are. Uh, uh, Abhijit is saying, please share your Twitter handle. Uh, that's a very good question. My Twitter handle is at the rate Dr. Zadhav. Yeah. I will repeat that. Uh, uh, my, my Twitter handle is uh, at the rate Dr. Zadhav. Dr. Zadhav. D R D big uh, R small and Zadhav. Um, that's my Twitter handle. Friends, please do join me on uh, follow me on uh, Twitter, and I would be delighted to answer your questions and uh, get to know you better. Uh, Bhanu Prasad uh, has asked, "What is your opinion about Tina Dabi's success, uh, Professor? Tina Dabi's success is phenomenal, um, uh, and it, this is a reflection. I believe that." There is a kind of silent revolution taking place in our country from every walk of life. People who were once upon a time, whose ancestors were outside, living outside, outside the village boundaries, they are coming into the mainstream and in every walk of life, we find one or more person trying to carve out a dignified life for himself or herself. I think this is remarkably good and there, uh, the symbolic uh, uh, this event of uh, uh, this uh, girl getting such success at IS is only a beginning of uh, a major revolution that is taking place. I'm very happy about it. I'm indeed delighted that she has got such great success and she will set an example. She has set an example for many others to follow and that I, I hope that the numbers grow. You know, one person getting there is not enough larger and larger people should go, go reach there. Dr. Ambedkar had uh, exhorted all of us to, to, to occupy the positions of power. Uh, and that dream, you know, uh, is now being pushed forward by persons like this young, bright lady. Uh, Tejas Vaisa is saying, Sir, in this globalized period, where the Dalit movement stands and what are the major challenges? Uh, friend, it will require a much longer answer and I cannot uh, answer that. But uh, stay in touch with me on email um, or other means and I certainly will answer that. Uh, uh, Abhijit Ingle says, thank you, sir. And uh, Rajendra Randir, India. Rajendra Randir has come out with one more question. India-China trade is highly skewed in China's favor, toy industry, so and so on. Uh, now, mobile phone industries are getting wiped out. Uh, uh, 
Now, why is the government turning a blind eye to this phenomenon? No, 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 no. Government is not turning blind eye to this. China, you know, we have to deal with China. That, that, that there is no, uh, no, no, uh, no doubt about it. China is extremely competitive. What has happened is that China's growth rate is slowing down now. China's growth rate is slowing down now. Uh, it, for the first time, from 11%, China's growth rate has come down to uh, under 7%. And India's growth rate, which had gone up to 9.3% in 2008, came down, but now it is inching upwards. So today, India's growth rate is ahead of China's growth rate, which is good. But China achieved more than 10% growth rate for 25 years in a row. Now, that is a record that is unbeatable. And uh, we have to deal with China. China has a strategy for everything. We can't wish them away. We have to deal with them and the most effective way of dealing with them is to have appropriate policies in place. Uh, putting a ban on this and ban on that is just not going to be possible. We have to become far more competitive than what, they are, what we are and we have to focus on our core areas of strength and do as better, uh, as, uh, as good as possible. I think we'll have to face the competition with China. Uh, what, has, what is happening is very unfortunate when we see uh, many of the Indian icons are also produced in China uh, that uh, hurts and that hurts many people. I think the best way is to become remain and become more and more competitive and therefore appropriate policies would have to be followed there. Uh, Unkar. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, there is uh, Suraj Prakash Singh. Uh, China's one belt, one road program looks good. Uh, what should be India's stand to? No, India has, a, we, we don't have to copy anybody, but we have to pick the best that many countries have done and try to, uh, try to modulate that, try to uh, change that, keeping in mind the socio-economic political circumstances in our country. Uh, Vishwanath Bane has asked, happy to see you and hear you, sir. Vishwanath, uh, very nice to uh, uh, nice, nice to talk to you. You were working with me once upon a time. I'm very, I'm very glad to see you. Uh, IMF has uh, Rajendra Randhir has been saying that IMF has predicted bankruptcy of Saudi Arabia in five years from now if the current global oil market scenario prevails. Uh, I do not think so. Uh, the global oil market scenario is bad. We know that. Uh, bad in the sense, bad for them. It has been a boost to us in a way because the oil prices which were once upon a time about $140 uh, dollars per barrel, uh, they have come down and today they are around 40 to $50 uh, uh, dollars per barrel. This has been a great boon and great advantage to countries like India. We have been importing more than 70% of our oil requirement. Uh, so this is a great boon to us. As far as Saudi Arabia is concerned, what is happening is that Saudi Arabia is the largest producer. Uh, I'm back here. Um, we were talking about Saudi Arabia. That's a very interesting question. Um, you know what has happened is what has happened is that uh, once upon a time Saudi Arabia, which is the leading producer. Um, now what has happened is that uh, there are alternatives available to Saudi Arabia. One is that um, uh, new discoveries have been made uh, in United States and also in Russia. So what has happened is that the global oil market is being divided and um, one reason to be, if Saudi Arabia wants the oil prices to be raised, they can do that immediately by reducing their production of oil. Uh, if they 50% reduce their uh, oil production by 50%, suddenly the oil prices world over will go up. But they are not doing that. Apparently, one reason why they are not doing that uh, is that the marginal cost of production of oil for Saudi Arabia is very little, whereas the marginal cost of production of oil is very high for Russia as well as for United States. So one theory is that they are waiting. Saudi Arabia Bia is waiting for these companies in USA as well as in Russia to go out of business. If the prices of oil, price of oil falls below 40, they are going to all go out of business. So maybe they are waiting for that. Um, 
but we do not know. There is a lot of uncertainty. In the meantime, as far as India is concerned, we should take the advantage of uh, the oil prices uh, uh, fall. Um, there is a possibility in the near future of the oil prices going up again uh, beyond $50 at which they are. If that would add to the inflation and inflation which is already uh, on the rise will get further push if the oil prices go up so we have to keep track of that uh, uh, smith gade is saying hi sir can you talk something about how current niti ayog is different from the planning commission very good question uh, frankly speaking and i'm not saying this because i'm not part of niti ayog uh, niti ayog is not has not so far made its presence felt two of the things very important things that uh, were being done earlier uh, was that uh, all the chief ministers of all states had to come with their annual plan to the central government to the planning commission that is no longer happening um, uh, niti ayog doesn't do that most importantly the job of allocation of resources to various uh, uh, states and various departments which was effectively done planned expenditure which was effectively done by planning commission is no longer done by uh, niti ayog um, that has been uh, given to the ministry of finance what is happening uh, friends is that planning commission was not another department another ministry of the government it was a body which had a oversight of all the departments all the ministries used to come together in planning commission that is no longer happening and niti ayog has no role to play as uh, a platform for all the ministries co to come together i think that is sad so i'm not happy at all about the contribution that the niti ayog has been making um, suraj prakash singh has said uh, recently madhya pradesh announced happiness ministry what is your view on that you know you know uh, what has happened is that that there is a concept you know there is a lot of unhappiness about the gross domestic product gross domestic product so people have found an alternative to gross domestic product and that is called gross domestic happiness that is a sentimental emotional measure uh, that cannot replace the gdp with all the problems that gdp calculations have uh, still that is the least bad way of measuring the value addition in our country um, and therefore ministries can be formed but that uh, there is not That's much important. i won't give much importance to that rudra sen sharma is saying sir how can we reconcile high gdp growth with the rising socio economic inequality how can we make growth inclusive the only way i believe uh, rudra ji that uh, we are on a high growth trajectory and we will if all goes well in the next 3 to 5 years we can even cross 10% growth rate but are we going to be able to sustain it that is the most important question to my mind we will be able to sustain that high growth trajectory if and only if our growth is inclusive and participatory this is very important that is where plans like schedule ka sub plan and the tribal sub plans must be implemented in their letter and spirit uh ramesh uh, pranesh uh, bosle say what do you think sir about reservation i believe uh, pranesh that reservations are needed why are reservations needed reservations are needed because of the innate inability of our system to be just and fair as long as our system remains unjust and unfair the reservations are going to be needed uh, then there are questions rajendra have taken lots of questions of you you are so i'm going to move on to others uh, again welcome uh, so many other people who have joined the chat uh, uh, please do follow without for, without fail do not forget to follow me on uh, on uh, twitter and my twitter handle is at the rate dr jadhav d small r jadhav at the rate dr jadhav that's my uh, khalid momin has asked uh, what is your opinion about raguram rajan sir's comment in the land of uh, in the land of uh, uh, one eyed man uh, man is king this was an unfortunate choice of words but the essential message is correct uh, the choice of word was of course completely wrong he should not have said that but basically the argument that uh, raguram rajan my friend was making was that let us not get carried away that we are the fastest growing country in the world when the world is down 
with all kinds of problems where all industrial countries, all the so-called advanced economies have slowed down considerably, India's growth rate is rising. So in the backdrop of things which are happening, particularly China's growth rate coming down to below 7% um, and uh, industrial countries' growth also slowing down considerably, um, some of them were in recession and they are recovering very slowly. So against that adverse background, our performance look better, which is good. But the sad part is that there is no room for complacency. Uh, our performance is better in relation to other countries which are doing very badly. But do not forget, for example, a country like China, which has registered a record growth of more than 10% for 25 years in a row. So we are not there as yet. So he was, Raghuram Rajanji was trying to warn us that it's nice to be happy, but don't get carried away by that because we have so many problems, challenges that we have to face. And in spirit, I completely agree with him, although the choice of words that he made, Raghuram Rajanji made, was most unfortunate. Uh, Bise Ram has said, uh, what is your opinion about Kopardi incident in Maharashtra? Uh, 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 Bise Ji, I, I, I do not have all the details about it uh, because I have heard conflicting stories. Uh, so I'm not clearly in position to uh, give my view. Uh, uh, but uh, anything that happens which has connotation of caste has to be handled very, very carefully. In many cases, they, they are personal problems and uh, uh, personal problems get uh, reflected into some kind of uh, uh, adverse thing happening. Uh, but we do not want to see everything only from the perspective of the caste of the perpetrators of the crimes because criminals are criminals. They do not have caste. They are not criminals because they belong to a particular caste. Criminals have no caste. They have no religion. Their religion, their caste is only criminals. Uh, Sunni, uh, Sunni Puri has said, Sunday ho ya Monday, rose khao ande. Okay, what are you trying to say? Uh, I do not know what you are trying to say. Uh, okay, all right. I'll, uh, I'm coming close to uh, finishing uh, the chat. Uh, but if you have any other quick questions, uh, new comments, I would be happy to answer. Uh, if I do not, please do remember to join, follow me on Twitter. And my Twitter handle is at the rate Dr. Zadham. Sir, uh, Mohan, somebody known as Mohan asked you a question regarding the Ambedkar Bhavan okay. in Mumbai. All right. What's your view on that? Uh, my uh, colleague Vinod tells me that uh, uh, somebody called Mohan asked me a question about Ambedkar Bhavan and uh, I did not take that question. So let me, uh, in conclusion, uh, at the last answer, let me talk about the Ambedkar Bhavan. The Ambedkar Bhavan incident is a matter of shame. I feel very strongly that the place from where Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar's movement was conducted for so long the place from where many of his periodicals like uh, uh, you know uh, Prabuddha Bharat, uh, Samata um, and so on, they were released from that Buddha Bhushan printing press. So bringing that historical side down is the uh, most condemnable act and I feel very strongly that the people who were responsible for bringing down that historical side must be brought to books. And this has been a terrible thing that has been done. It's a very sad blow that has been given to uh, the Ambedkar movement. Uh, and we do not know the motives of these people, but nothing, nothing can justify bringing down a historical site from where Dr. Ambedkar's movement flourished. So uh, now it has become a very political issue. Um, I feel that the Ambedkar Bhavan must be reconstructed and it must become the property of the society as a whole. Ambedkari Samaj as a whole, it should not become property of few trustees who claim that they, they have a legitimate claim over the, over the trust, nor it can become 
exclusive property of Prakash Ambedkar ji and his brothers. This is something that belongs to the society as a whole and it must be reconstructed and the Buddha Bhushan printing press must be immediately restored as a museum of Ambedkar movement. That is something which must receive a priority. I condemn those who have unleashed this terror in uh, going in the middle of night and destroying the Ambedkar heritage. These are not the people who think about the intellectual heritage of Ambedkar movement. These are the people who are talking about the heritage of Ambedkar movement in terms of property and the land to be grabbed and the money that can be grabbed. I think it is very unfortunate and I condemn it in the strongest possible terms. Well, friends, uh, on that note, uh, let me sign off again. Please do connect with me. Uh, follow me on Twitter and my Twitter handle is at the rate Dr. Gadha. It has always been a great pleasure to talk to you and we will continue this uh, uh, in the future also. Please do give me your feedback, your suggestions uh, about uh, the timing and the frequency of holding this, this kind of uh, chat, Facebook chat. Thank you. Thank you very much.